Yes. I talk about that level. All right. That's the reality of it. Yeah. <laughs> except when people, except when people put microphones, shove microphones in my face. And it makes me, I see this guy from ET just did it out there. And he made me feel really self-conscious and kind of, like that, and I couldn't talk there. I couldn't get my diaphragm working at all. It kept bringing, I kept leaning back thinking, oh my God, if I get back it, I'll be able to breathe properly. But as I moved back, he pushed it closer towards me. It was incredible. Oh, listen, I'm just going over, um, cut off before. This is, I think you said, the fifth day of this shoot. That's right, yeah. And um, it's actually taking you sort of all over New York, hasn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of location shooting on it. I mean, um, the director, uh, Chen Kaiga, um, meticulously worked for about two weeks in advance to pick the locations that, uh, that he wanted to use. And it's also incredibly well organized, although it has been done over sort of five days. Mm. You know, you just sort of arrive and actually start filming, which is quite a pleasure, because videos tend to uh, sort of drag out over five days, and actually you only really do two days' work, but we've done a lot of work this time. That's right. Great. We've been, um, we've been, well, Nick's been in an auction room, I've been in a sub, in a, in a cable car and under a bridge and uh, we've done stuff in the streets in the park it's been it's interesting so it's kind of individual shot other than the three of you together well, this is the one scene where the three of us shoot um, together that we're doing today that's with the dominoes and the domino man how did that all come about you were talking about this, this, this domino thing um, well, the people that actually do the dominoes are fascinating. Uh, I just got this vision of, well, who calls them up to actually ask them to make these incredible domino things? I mean, they can make bridges and the most complex things. He's got a whole book full of... Uh, full of domino configurations and different right. colored dominoes, <clears throat> different size dominoes and dominoes with different dots on them. You have to talk to him about it, I think. Is there a lot of demand for that kind of thing? Japanese soft drinks commercials, I think. <laughs> yeah. Apart from, I think everybody knows the old adage, adage never work with children and dominoes. <laughs> Uh, t it's hard to get sort of an idea of just what the whole thing is going to look like from this one scene. And you were saying before that it's the way Kaiga works is sort of impressionistic, not very. I wonder if it's at all possible to describe how this video is going to look. I wouldn't say it's impressionistic. I mean, he's had a li good listen to the music, and he's got his own interpretation of of, of what the song kind of well it's what the song inspires him to see on a very on that basic sort of level and um, it's not it's not a, it's not a an intellectual concept video it's just it's just it's a pictures of, of human beings you know uh, living really there's nothing incredible happens or nothing particularly significant it's just New York seen through the eyes of, of Chen Kaiga you mentioned the people living in life, I think, and in a, in a fashion was sort of, I think, what had something to do with the idea behind this song. And, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the origin of shame and, and uh, if you can talk a bit about David Miles and, and who he is. Well, yeah, a friend of mine died in, in an accident involving drugs about a year and a half ago. And, um, I never really got a chance to say goodbye to him. And do you believe in shame was just my kind of was my little message to him, you know? And to me, I suppose. It's simply yeah, I think probably the most memorable part of this one line from the song is it's really the end. The part of you inside when he never dies. Is that did you want to end it on sort of an uplifting kind of positive? It wasn't even a question of that. I, I couldn't I couldn't really face the idea that my friend was gone. And um, and I said to him in my own mind, I said, if you do want to, if you want to live on a little bit, there's always a little bit of me that, that you can live in. Was it important to you guys that this, that aspect of this song, uh, the fact that it's dedicated not only to David, but to Alex Sadkin and Andy Warhol as well, come across in the video at all? I don't think it's quite as personalized as that in the video. There are little references within it certainly um when when we played the song to chen for the first time um he took his own thoughts from it then he asked us what we felt about it individually 
and he wanted to know who the three people the song was dedicated to were and why it was done. And I think it's just really his interpretation. Yeah. Um, that was what was important to him. Can you say what any of the references are? For instance, to Warhol, or is there anything that well, being it, in New York? There's an auction room scene that is quite obviously a reference to Andy Warhol, and there's a photograph of uh, Simon's friend, which uh, which is in the video at the start. And as far as Alex is concerned, it, we wouldn't be around song. if it wasn't for Alex. It's all yeah. it's all for him, isn't it? Um, talking about Kaige, I think a lot of our audience in particular, and maybe quite a few Americans don't know who he is. Um, say who he is and just tell you. Okay, well, he's, um, let me tell you who Chen Kaige is. Ch it's Mr. Chen, that's his surname, and, and Chinese people have their surname first, so his, 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 his personal name is Kaige. He's a director who grew up in China um, during, uh, he grew up during the Cultural Revolution. And um, <clears throat> I think his uh, parents were involved in the arts. And he was, he was, uh, he worked in forests and he did sort of heavy labor for a while. But the government sort of had an eye on him and sent him to the Chinese film school in Peking. And he was the f he's really basically the first Chinese director to get a grant and permission to go and study film and work outside of China. Um, he's made a number of films. Um, among them is one that I've seen called Yellow Earth, which is a story of well, it's a, it's a, it's about the, it's a, not about a cultural revolution, but it's about Chinese people and, and getting them out of being peasants and into the modern world. And. Uh, I think what really drew me, I can, and you can only talk personally about this kind of thing, but I mean, what drew me to him is just the way he sees things. He has a certain way of looking at everything with the same eye and casting his own, well, putting it through his own filter, which, which I thought was brilliant, really. You work with a variety of directors over the years, although I'd imagine that his particular perspective, just being who he is and coming from where he does, that um, it'd be really unique. I do think that this video will look unique. Um, we've always tried to do that in the past, obviously, but I mean, with this one, we have the advantage of working with someone who's come from such a different cultural background. Um, I mean, the film that Simon referred to, The Yellow Earth, one of the most astonishing things about it is the use of color. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's so beautiful. And, um, I think that the way he works from what we've seen, he's definitely trying to capture that within this video. I mean, he's much more concerned with what colors you're wearing than what kind of clothes you're wearing, which, yeah. which is actually quite quite a relief I in many ways. I think his, his lighting and, and lighting man and sort of the look man needs to mention here, that's, that's Gu Changwei. He's um, working with Cheng. He's like sort of the right-hand man, so to speak, and he's, he's really keeps an eye on the the look and the colour of it. He works on all his features as well. Yeah, he, he was flown in from China. Um, you guys, and, uh, stop a second. I mean, it sounds horrible. 